Haha, <laughs> how's it going guys? My name is Righteous Nikki and welcome to another Overmind game. I really wanted to show this game because just take a look of <laughs> with who and versus who I'm going to be playing now. The first one that you might uh, probably going to be picking your eye on is going to be Alex the Pro G. He's a very known player in the Heroes of the Sword community. I think uh, he's one of I think he has a team or something and performs greatly in the competitive scene. I don't follow him that much, but I know his name not only because people have talked about him, but I actually had personally played several games with him in the preseason a lot. Back in the preseason, everyone was rank one and there was MMR there. And I just had a lot of opportunity to play with him back then. Uh, recently he's probably been grinding uh, to Grandmaster and considering I've been like Diamond uh, haven't had the opportunity to be matched with him so this is the first time I've been matched with him since two years probably so that's pretty cool actually preseason was one year ago uh, one year uh, but the other interesting player that I, uh, I was interested in here was actually from the enemy team uh, it's their banner it's called Ryoskmek He's been season 2 top 1 on the leaderboard in Grandmaster, that's what I remember. I have also played with him in preseason uh, and basically I know those two. Uh, I've heard the name Shrimpy, uh, Shrimpy, yeah, before, but I don't really know him. And it turned out that our last pick, Karti, is the current number 1 in Grandmaster, at least. When I recorded this game, he was number one. You can, uh, you're going to see that uh, in the water screen. Now, I'm really pumped up <laughs> about this game, though, because uh, it's just a really big honor for me to be matched with some of the world's best players. Now, let's talk about a bit about the drafting phase here. Um, their first pick, they picked Abator. Abator is a really interesting pick here, man. I haven't seen Abator on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Because generally I don't feel like it's a good pick. But this guy proved me wrong, man. This guy played Abattor on this map to perfection. Uh, I'm going to be working at that thing later. Uh, Alex picked Muradin. We got a Tyrande. Those are some pre pretty solid picks. They got Lyoric. Lyoric is something also that is not picked very often nowadays. Uh, and yeah, pretty interesting picks. Uh, Limic is a solid pick there. Uh, I really wanted to play Arthas, man. Um, cause I think Arthas is pretty solid for Tomb of the Spider Queen pushing. They banned Sylvanas and I consider Cindergosa to be like a Sylvanas push. Uh, 8C is going to be banned from our side, 8Cs. Has some pretty nice global presence. Straw is going to be banned. That is Straw before they nerfed him. He, he already had the 60 second cooldown on Earthquake. This is also Arthas before he got uh, buffed. He doesn't have 10 armor here. They're going to ban Tychus. Um, that's pretty strange. Maybe Tychus is a pretty good counter to Lyoric, but we're also going to be uh, going double tank. And I'm going to be going Arthas here. Now, I don't know. I felt like Arthas is pretty good for this map and a pretty nice second tank to, uh, to Muradin. And why not? I always like to bring something more interesting, more spicy, uh, generally in my games most of the time non-meta things, you know me. Uh, we're going to get Vawa, very solid damage doer. Cannot say uh, anything bad about that. I'm actually pretty happy with the Tyrande. Not many players have the balls to play so support Tyrande. And I actually play it and I respect this guy for playing it as well. So that's pretty nice. But we're actually going to get a Karazim uh, as a partner support here for the Tyrande. I think Karazim is going to go on auto attack build, but still the heal from the W is quite enough help. Uh, I've seen even DPS Karazim out uh, healing most of the healers just with, with his W. Uh, they're going to pick Faustad. Faustad is... I wouldn't say he has that good global presence for this man, but but still. It's nice to have a Faustad win, uh, window that is pretty solid. And Uriel. Uriel is probably one of the stronger supports next to Malfurion. Uh, Rhaegar has been really uh, used that much when I played this game. It was around 10 days ago when I played this game. 
uh, Rhaegar just popped out recently, comboing with Trow and Diablo. Uh, but yeah, they're going to pick Orion. We're going to get Karazim. And man, I really. Uh, this was a very new experience type of game to me because. How can I put this? Uh, 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 everyone was playing very aggressive, man. I, and I wasn't expecting it. Uh, generally, I try to play a bit more safe and try to maybe, you know, get mistakes from opponents and then, you know, make hard engage. Generally, I'm actually not like that. Generally, I, I try to poke the enemy and test out how aggressive they are. Especially if I'm playing an aggressive hero, if you know my Illidan, for example, I really like to test the enemy's aggressiveness with my own. Uh, but in general, those guys play way more aggressive than me and that really surprised me uh, because I wasn't prepared for it. And I did manage to catch up though. So that made the game very interesting. Um, um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to be... Uh, uh, I know. Uh, I'm just trying to see if anyone knows me here, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it seems that's not the case, though. Um, um, what else? This is, by the way, on my uh, Smurf account. I'm Diamond 2. Back then, I'm actually now master on my Smurf account, managed to reach master. But when I was match, I was Diamond 2, and it was very late at night. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Europe time, uh, Europe time, it was my time, Bulgarian time, 3 o'clock, uh, I don't know how the Meridian is called, so, I'm just going to throw my freezes there, uh, as an artist, I'm going to be building my, uh, general build, which is freezing and dead coil, mortal coil, dead coil, yep, and generally I like this build because it provides you poke, basically, you can freeze them from a long distance and you can poke them with your coil from a long distance and as well heal yourself with the coil. I think this is uh, a better build for Arthas if you're playing versus a lot of ranged. Though, uh, recently I haven't been really actually building Arthas in my other games like that. I've been focusing more around my, um, what's it called, my E, uh, the AoE thingy. I try to upgrade it uh reduce its you know mana cost attack speed uh, bonuses etc uh level 7 i also went for uh i i usually go for icebound fortitude or the third attack heal but generally versus a lot of range i do think the dead coil uh upgrade is very nice uh, especially for survival because you don't really want to be auto attacking trying to auto attack versus a lot of range now what i'm doing here is uh Trying to soak the middle, I'm going to be playing, as you, as I said, very defensively. Seems our team picked a kill on uh, Lyric there. Uh, Muradin was pretty well there, but we did pick a kill, so that's pretty nice. Uh, generally, I'm just playing my safer soak game. I don't want to be pl uh, doing any aggressive mode because I'm on a very high-end uh, skill level territory here. And I just really want to see how the enemy is going to react to stuff and stuff so uh, Vow is going to get taken on I'm now engaging here on the side I missed my W though I'm swing the limbing uh, but we're not going to get any follow up uh, engage though Muradin here from the side jumping on the limbing I'm going to follow up with a freeze going to follow up with some damage to Randy stun mark on to Randy that was actually perfect uh, connection of CC uh, but uh, we didn't have the damage and Leoric uh, managed to call, manages to come here to provide some fuel for the Leeming. We're all pretty well, we're just going to get back. I'm going to go for the Death Ward, reduce cooldown on, on Mortal Kombat by 2 seconds and increase its range. So it's going to be much easier for me to actually, um, actually to land uh, the Mortal Kombat on further targets. Now, I actually feel that the game isn't going very well for us. I mean... We're not losing, but it's pretty neutral, and I feel like a lot of those players know each other, and they really liked, especially in the drafting phase, they really had a really nice chat between each other, uh, like the they they like they knew each other very well. So I felt like they should 
I wrote it because I felt like uh, they need to take the game a bit more seriously. Um, because, of course, it's a ranked game. <laughs> not, not, I'm not saying that they're playing bad, but I know that they, that, can, that they can play even better if they focus there. So, we're getting some trades uh, on the Lyric there. Not, not too much. I'm going to have 10 gems going to deliver. Um, generally, I like to deliver if I get around 9 or more gems. So, that's going to be pretty nice. Nice turn on Brody. I'm going to follow up with my Root. But I'm taking a lot of damage from the Lyric there. Uh, gener another root there. Muradin engages on the Lemming follow up by stun. But the Abator is going to be uh, saving Lemming there. I managed to dodge her bolt in game there. But Jenner and pretty well. Muradin also died. And it seems... I, I don't know. It's pretty equal at the moment. <clears throat> but I feel like the last few one two minutes... It's been going maybe a bit bad for us because we picked some pretty nice kills in the start. Uh, but in the moment, I feel like it's maybe equal. Uh, I'll be honest, it's equal. We're just having testing the water skewer with kills, see who uh, who ha who has what playstyle, etc. etc. York has a lot of gems. I'm going to go for the immortal call. Basically, this talent allows your mortal call to heal you for the damage dealt. Uh, so that's pretty neat. <laughs> it makes it makes your call to be your very nice offense and defensive tool. Uh, Morden is going to stop the Lyric from uh, throwing 20 gems there. Uh, 20 gems is pretty aggressive actually to contest because they actually have almost 50. Uh, oh no one's contesting our Vow. That's pretty strange. She deliver, delivered 16 there pretty easily. I'm going to deliver 7 and we need only 3 there. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually not sticking uh, that much with our team at the moment, because I'm just playing the met. Uh, I'm just playing the. Ooh, ooh! But the stun from Muradin there, going to finish the Oreo. I'm just trying to play by the book, is what I'm trying to say. So claims deliver James and follow up some teammates in need if I see. I'm not going in a full rotation with a four at the moment, which might be a mistake. But generally. I'm on the edge here because I know I need to give my best here to prove to those people that I'm not bad, that bad on, <laughs> uh, on the game, at the game. And here is our first comment from Alex, Immortal Coil Heart. I think that's sarcastic comment, comment criticizing my Immortal Coil build, uh, but that's not going to... It's not going to bring down the righteousness in me. I'm going to... <laughs> Uh, reply uh, with a humoristic comment here. Uh, we did actually grab a kill on Fausta there with some ch chain CC, and we're going to have the spiders there uh, getting our first push. We're going to be getting closer to level 10, which is awesome. Uh, having level advantage uh, is always nice. That means we, we might get some very nice engage if we decide to. Um, Muradin coming very well here on the side though. I'm really worried about the Muradin. I mean, he has his health regen, uh, but generally. Anyway, I'm going for the Cinderegosa, of course. Now, I see the Lyric there, but Muradin is going to go ha uh, balls deep. I know the fort is attacking Muradin, so I'm going to freeze the fort, so Muradin takes less damage. Uh, Lyric is going to get the hell out of there, but we're going to just keep doing damage on the uh, fort. Uh, Muradin is going to heal up a bit. Uh, he's going to re-engage there on the Uriel. I'm going to follow up with my thingy that I missed. Uriel is going to Uti, but me and Muradin are quite tanky to solve this damage. And despite that Abator was on Uriel, we had four people there. I'm going to finish him out now. Lemming coming on the side, Lurlik uh, in tomb on me, but I'm going to be a bit tanky for him. I'm going to heal myself. Uh, though there is a lot of chaotic trading happening at the moment. Cannot keep with everything, but in general, <laughs> I'm just making my humoristic comments there. <laughs> uh, I see an Abator aberration they're actually pushing now. Uh, the Oleoric, I managed to caught him in my freezing, and with the damage zeros, we're going to be able to finish him out quickly. But I'm really worried about this Abator uh, monstrosity there. And by the way, as you can see here, the talent. Abator picked the talent that gives shoots to entire the entire wave, and that makes his pushing so strong, man. 
Uh, I mean, it makes it so strong that me as an artist, I I, I can I I just I cannot kill the monstrosity. By the way, uh, one versus one. And as an artist, I actually have a pretty decent damage. Uh, now they're going to be pushing. They actually did get the web reverse. I totally forgot about that. But they're going to be pushing. They're going to take our first four there. Uh, but we don't manage to get a root on Faustad. In tomb on the Vala, though, this isn't good news. You're going to get stunned. Uh, stunned from Tyrande there, but that's not going to cut it. I'm going to try to collect some gems as well as Tyrande uh, from the Vala. Uh, but in general, we should retreat here. I'm pretty well on mana. Tyrande in a very bad spot there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This doesn't, uh, those last few trades didn't seem uh, quite well for us. Now I'm going to go for the Trail of Frost. This is going to give me the that increased range that I've been missing. Landing my, uh, you know, Frost Waves. Uh, so it's going to help me out uh, with me missing those waves. Quite a lot actually. And not only is it going to allow me to actually land it on a further range. If anyone is cut up in the path of the wave. He's going to get rooted as well. <coughs> now, what do we have here? Lyoric engaging on the Karazim. Karazim actually has 20 gems. He's probably trying to deliver them. We're going to get a mark on uh, Lyoric. We're going to get Perma Stun by Tyrande and Muradin. Muradin going balls deep there on the uh, Uriel. I'm actually planning to maybe Cindergosa. I'm going to Cindergosa right there. I'm going to freeze the fort so my team can engage. Fausta the win from the behind there. Uh, but we're just going to be able to finish the Uriel. Muradin is going to go back here. I think Faustat engaged there because he thought that we're going to take some extra damage on the fort. Or maybe just wanted to push, a, push this uh, to the top side so her, uh, his teammates can escape. But it didn't went that well for him. And I actually have 24 gems going to deliver them here. And I'm really worried about this monstrosity. Uh, I mean, this build on Avatar is really working out here. He's pushing quite a lot. Monstrosity plus plus uh, the minion shield thingy, uh, and as you can see here, I cannot deal with the monstrosity. I mean, actually, I'm taking a lot of minion damage here, uh, but Jen, just him, <laughs> him shooting the minion wave, and I'm uh, like, nope, I'm getting the hell out here. No way, no chance. Uh -uh. I'm actually even asking my teammates to come help here because. I have zero chance. I mean, I'm not actually doing zero damage to the monstrosity. I'm doing so little damage that I'm actually healing the monstrosity. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just uh, telling to my teammates I can shake him. Uh, so they can provide some extra help here. Trand is going to come cause him as well. I'm actually going to get another wave of the spiders. And we're going to try to do something. My sister Gosa is coming up here pretty shortly. Uh, we do have one level advantage, we're closer to the 16. Um, general, generally what I wanted to say is that I noticed that the, uh, our Muradin, I'm actually going to uh, engage with the Syndragosa, they're going to swallow them all, uh, going to get disengaged, but Muradin from the side with the Q, going to land in on Vawa. Vawa, our Vawa, I mean Liming Vawa is going to fall with the damage, Karazim following up on the Liming. Uh, she died somehow, I think to Tyrande's ultimate, I'm not really sure, uh, but we managed to pick a kill. Uh, Karazim though is going to uh, die to the tomb. We still have this uh, fort frozen, so that's pretty nice. Uh, Vala doing some very aggressive trading there, uh, but we're trying to be safe here. We actually have one uh, hero advantage. Uh, we're going to stun the Lurk. He's going to be taking shit ton of damage there, by the way. Uh, so we have one man advantage and one level advantage, so we're pretty pretty confident here pushing. But in general, oh, uh, Moradin with another engage. So I, I really wanted to mention that Moradin has been playing very aggressively, uh, which I'm not really used to. I've been trying to follow up his engages as best as possible, uh, because usually I I haven't seen Moradin be like that in other games, and I don't say it's bad. It's actually pretty good that. He's been engaging like that, and I really liked his engage from the side there on the last push. I I, I had no idea that he was ac actually there. Uh, probably our team didn't know as well. So we have our level advantage here. Val is taking a Merc camp on the bottom there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm actually asking here my team what should we take. Uh, uh, what should I take for the level 20 upgrade? Um, 
that's not a level 20 <laughs> talent. I think that's that was another sarcastic comment that I should have been taking this talent on level 7 instead of the <laughs> uh, dead co upgrade. But I I'm just sticking with my build, man. Nope. I think my build is better <laughs> for this situation. Uh, I'm going to root them up. Uh, I'm going to summon the Sidragosa. Going to be freezing their carries. Muradin is doing some very nice damage, but we're going to get stuck here with the Muradin. Oh, he's going to get quick Q. They're going to survive. Muradin, though, why is Muradin <laughs> going so deep despite he's being so low? Well? Like this, this really bothers me sometimes. But he's playing so well that he survives with that little HP. Uh, that I really just. It mind blows me that uh, he knows the limits of his survival as a Muradin, uh, which is awesome. I mean, it's really cool to know your the limits of your hero. I have a, the same feeling when I play Illidan. Sometimes I'm very low, but I go for uh, unfavorable trades, and mo and sometimes I win them. Now Muradin is going to jump on the Yorick there. He missed, but I'm going to root those two guys. I'm just trying to get some pure. Uh, to disengage. I'm going to now go to en get engaged by the Lyoric. I'm going to get very nicely healed by Trandi. They are Lyoric now out of position. Going to get finished out. Uh, Muradin now going to get executed, but Karazim there. Uh, he didn't manage to land as much as damage as he wanted, probably because Uriel did uh, use the crystal. But yeah, we're trading some damage there, but in general, I feel like we should be going back because Lyoric is actually. Lyoric is actually gaining back as well. I'm telling to my team that we should deliver some of the gems we have collected. Because we really don't want to be losing them. And we're pretty close to 60, so why not? Oh, oh there is the curse on. <sighs> so I was thinking about Death's Advance for level 20. But I came to the conclusion that I actually need the Anti-Magic Shield. Uh, because of the Lyoric Tomb. Basically... I take a lot of magic damage when I get in tomb. Now I'm going to get engaged by those two people, but I did manage to land that uh, f uh, freeze there. But Fausta is going to come from the sides, going to ulti me back to their team. They're going very aggressive on me. I'm going to get a double freeze on them. Lyoric failing the in tomb there. Uh, now Vau is starting to trade. Uh, I'm already now jumping in there, F uh, stunning the Fausta. The crystal going on Fausta. Vava Wooting, Karazim going though on the side, zoning out, Wooting, dealing a lot of damage to their carries. Murden is going to finish uh, the Fausta there. Uh, our bottom carries are pretty well, but there uh, the top uh, squad is doing some very nice damage on the Lyoric. Murden extremely well there, he's going to survive, and everyone is going to retreat at this point. So I actually couldn't done anything else to prevent my death there, to be honest. I got very heavily engaged, especially by the, that Fausta. And this is where I made, made my conclusion that the anti-magic shell is actually going to help me survive in such shit situations. Uh, there goes another one too there, but Moridin is going to be... Uh, they're actually... Uh, <laughs> we're staying on the edge there pretty nicely. Uh, so they don't get in, in the auto attack range. Now I'm still worried about this monstrosity. Uh, so I'm asking again for some uh, backup here from my team because I know... I cannot take this monstrosity alone. Maybe if Avatar isn't present, but he is present, and uh, they're just going uh, half of my HP down. I'm going to take the anti magic shell. Uh, basically, if you take any magic damage while the shell is activated, you're going to negate that damage and going to heal for a quarter of the damage. Now I see their enemy team getting caught about uh, from our Tyrande Starfall. Moridin also engaging. I'm going to send the Cinderegos on the li line here. Uh, I'm actually going to miss it entirely. I only hit the Lyoric there, and that was pretty bad. Vau is going to laugh at me, unfortunately. Come on, man! It's the first Indragosa I missed from like five. Like, give me a break. Oh, maybe, maybe she wasn't laughing at me. I'm not really sure. But generally, it was a pretty bad Indragosa, and I thought that he was laughing at me, so I felt a bit bad. <laughs> anyway. We are going to deliver the gems once again. We still have the level 20 advantage. Lyoric here coming from nowhere though. We are just going to burst him very ni very nicely and easily. Uh, with the Trandy Mark. I feel like for a high level end player like Ryosmic. For him to be getting in a shit uh, shitty spot with the Lyoric is a pretty big mistake there. Muradin again from the side engage there. I am going to have my Frost Pad ready to 
uh, swallow the limiting, going to stick on her for the extra so another frost pad, going to finish her out, fast at disengage a bit late, maybe it was on cooldown, but we did generally managed to get a very important pick there. Lurk is going to be coming back to life. He's going to be leaving there uh, in tomb, but stunned from Tyrande. That actually didn't land, but a lot of follow-up damage. Going to freeze the Faustad. Uh, follow-up damage from our team. This is going extremely well for us. We have two of them dead, dead on a 60 second timer. And we just feel very comfortable here finishing out the game. Lurk is that going to die once again. Is generally like five versus one or two. And we're going to finish out the game clearly. Clearly and smoothly. Like a boss! <laughs> no, I didn't manage to do the Jack Septicle thingy there. I failed. Please don't say it's cringy. I tried and I failed. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I really had an awesome game with those guys. Um, despite the fact that, you know, no one from them knows me. <laughs> uh, but I know some of them, so that's uh, pretty nice. And I'm sorry, guys, but I forgot to show you the talents. I'm really sorry, uh, but you're going to have to deal with it. Um, yeah, that's going to be everything from me from today, guys. It's been an honor for me to be matched with those people, uh, to see how they play. And I learned a bit or a uh, thing or two. I actually already knew this stuff. Uh, I, I'm generally those types of players that try to go aggressive when I see an opportunity and hope for my team to follow up. But that doesn't happen in World Master and Diamond. But here, people follow up so nicely, man. It's so smooth. I had such a wonderful game here. Um, please don't say that I got carried, though. <laughs> I played pretty well, I think, there. Pretty well. Yeah. So this is going to be everything from me from today, guys. So thank you for watching. And until next time. Oh, wait. I totally forgot about my side story. Wait, 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 wait. So I had a very interesting story about this game before I managed to upload it. So basically, uh, that's why I'm actually uploading the game so late in the night. Uh, I, I was searching for the game file and it was gone. I figured out that I deleted it accidentally. So I started researching it. Google, is there a way to recover deleted files? I mean, I deleted uh, it, it in, in my trash can and I deleted the trash can's contents. I cleared it out, so there was no way I can turn it back. So I checked in Google. It turns out there was actually a few ways that uh, you can do it without a software, but it didn't work for me. So I down downloaded the software pro program, uh, but it turned out you needed to buy the program to actually use its uh, recovery feature. Feature, and I'm like, oh man, is there a pirate way to do it? Is like there is is there like a crack? And there was. So I go to this YouTube channel. It shows the way. And you don't download a special crack thingy, you replace some files, you uh, use a, a license code which generates an offline defense mechanism of the program, uh, which asks you to put a machine code of the program. So you put the machine code and then you get another code. <laughs> and I did manage to activate and bring, my, bring back this game back to life. And I was really uh, shocked. Uh, because I really wanted to show uh, you this game and I deleted it and I, uh, I'll be honest guys, I spent like one hour probably figuring out how I can bring this game back from my trash can and I felt so relieved when I finally did it. It was definitely worth the effort because this game uh, being matched with those players is very rare, very rare, especially with my rank. Uh, it was mainly because of the late hours, I guess, but Generally, I hope someday I can climb that up that I'm going to be getting matched with them regularly. But as for now, for now guys, thank you for watching. It was a pleasure and a honor for me. And until next time, stay righteous. Uh, but in general, I wouldn't suggest you to pick him for a wave here. Uh, because the bonuses you get are from auto attacks. I'm going to try to slow the cars in there. He's going to get out of range now in a bad spot. I'm going to use the Tazdingo, going to change the focus to Karazin. And here I can see, as, as you can saw, I got ulted by Diablo, but a coach, Uriel Ultim, going to use the teleport from the Diva and I'm going to get out of here.